Um, so it, you said you, you named that this is a really tough economic, economic time for folks with not a lot of revenue, and there's a lot of families that are really disproportionately suffering the impacts of that. So when we talk about a, raising taxes in a fair manner, can you explain more what you mean by fair? What would you Veronica, the only fair tax is an income tax. Nobody loses their job when you tax somebody's income or when you even tweak the income tax brackets a little bit, like we have to do to go back to 1999 and 2000 income tax uh, brackets. By the way, I didn't vote for the 1999 or 2000 tax bills because I knew what we were doing, lowering income tax, so eventually we could kill government and starve government. This is not a deficit by chance. This is a deficit by design that the Republicans plan. But, you know, so when you tweak it, and even the poorest people in this room that maybe make 20 or 30 grand a year, like me, uh, you know, uh, 32 to be exact, pay their income tax obligation. Nobody, I don't lose my job, but when you cut $2.7 billion out of my uh, allotment and you take money away from nursing homes and schools and higher education and hospitals, a lot of people lose their jobs. So the next question is Carol, or I'm sorry, Meredith. Hi, my name is Meredith Webb and I am a Take Action member. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia, and my school system was segregated with seven elementary schools, four white and three black, but we were all funneled together into one middle school and high school, but essentially we attended two different schools based on disparities in our earliest educational experiences in segregated schools. Years later, I realized that my community and I lost by ignoring such a divided system and allowing a startling silence around this racial injustice. An injustice that doesn't just happen in the South or just between blacks and whites or just in education, but throughout our society in Minnesota. The Renew, the Renew Minnesota vision calls upon us all to eradicate racism in our society today and to undo the continued impacts of past racism. I believe that each child and person has inherent worth. What will you do as a candidate to step away from tapping people's fears and playing on the divisions in our community about race? What is your plan to talk about race in a way that builds community and hope? Oh, that's a pretty long question. <laughs> <laughs> they teach you that now, Linda? <laughs> uh, well, again, my background is growing up in a, uh, I guess it would be an ethnically diverse neighborhood, not racially diverse, but uh, you know, I was taught by parents of the worth of, of everyone. And I realized you know, that no, to, to get ahead, people have to have a good education. And that education cannot be uh, equal if it's separate. And that was a decision that was made a long time ago in this country. And quite frankly, the state of Minnesota, I think, doesn't have a very good track record in uh, graduation rates and in actually in, in equal uh, education right now in many parts of this state, not just in inner city where there's um, racial minorities that aren't getting, I think, an equal education, but in many rural parts of this state where there are people that aren't getting good equal education because they do not have the property wealth to provide that for their people. So we have to get back to a fair system that funds education. The Minnesota Miracle was a beautiful concept. And the new Minnesota Miracle, uh, while well, the for current formula is terrible. It, it's, it's basically giving money to homeowners in wealthy suburbs, but not to, even to their school districts. And, and finally, the new Minnesota Miracle that a number of, uh, of uh, DFLers are talking about in the House and the Senate costs about two to two and a half billion dollars in a budget crisis where we're eight billion dollars in debt. So I don't know, to me, I, I'd want to go back to the old Minnesota miracle based on property wealth that funded education somewhat fairly. But we still have pockets of, of uh, concern. And there was, I mean, we all know where a lot of those pockets of concern are. Uh, in our K-12 system particularly, but even in higher education and making sure that people of all uh, different races, and colors, and creeds, and everything else can go in and get that decent education. As your governor, I would make sure that that funding that I talked about that's going to be raised fairly is distributed fairly, and that we have a, uh, a system where people 
are either going to be moved or whatever so that we all learn about each other and we uh, teach each other that we all have uh, beautiful cultures that can contribute to everybody else's beautiful culture. So you've, you've talked some about education, but as a governor, you're going to have the power to make big structural changes in the institutions that have perpetuated, well, perpetuated institutional racism. Beyond education, what concrete plans do you have to do this fairly in a way that brings community together? And well, the governor does have a lot of power, and, and as a governor, I would have a, you know, a, a, like a kitchen cabinet that I had talked about uh, at the DFL, uh, different DFL constituency caucuses. Uh, you know, as I said earlier, I have always let everyone into my, into my office uh, as a state representative, and I would let everybody into my office as a governor, common, ordinary people who can tell me what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, whether I'm being a income poop or a bonehead or doing things properly. I want input from everyone. Uh, you know, this is a pretty deep question to get into and do an app and an answer, but I can tell you this. You know, there are a lot of experts that I don't consider experts and I never have at the Capitol. And there are a lot of people that aren't considered experts that I have considered experts my entire life. A degree, some of the smartest people I've known are people that have uh, street smarts, people that have been self-taught, people that have worked with their hands. Uh, you know, I said it last week, I'll say it again here, so give me 10 for a second, please. You know, in the area of, uh, let, let's say, public safety, I wouldn't have a cop on public safety. I'd have a civilian. 